So just as I finished my last video doing the Anthem AVM70 UI web UI overview, they went ahead and made a pretty significant update to the interface. Now, since I did the, the original UI view, a couple things have happened with my Anthem. One, I've actually installed it, I've started to use it in my system, got it set up and that and so on. But in addition, there was a couple of firmware updates that were pushed out and I've learned a few things about using the, the processor. So let's take a look at some of the changes that went in and some of the interesting things about it. First thing I wanna show is there's actually a way to get to a change log, which is great. I think I commented in my original video, I always like to see change logs when firmware updates come out. There's not specifically a change log on the unit itself or in the web UI of the unit itself, but they do publish them on their web page. So I can link this in the description below, but essentially anthemab.com support change log and you type in this, the firmware version that you're looking to get information on and it pulls up just this simple little text list. But we can see here, and I think when I recorded my video, I was on uh, either the 1104 or this earlier 1105 but we've since gotten this 1.105.157, uh, which notes improvements like web UI bug fixes um, and improvements, rework web UI layout, look and feel, add support for a mobile web UI and so on. So they've really improved some aspects of the usability of the device. So I wanted to highlight that in the video here. Um, notice I am on 1.106.157 versus 1.105.157. I think this might just be a typo. But in any case, if I go, over to the Anthem UI, you can see just starting on the bottom, the, the, the store load update page, my current version here is this 1.106.157. In order to get this, I did have to enable beta updates and then do a check to force it. It wasn't picking that one up, but so far it's been stable at least for a few days. And, and again, it's, there's some really nice improvements in here. I definitely wanted to grab it as soon as I could. One of the notable changes is right here on this screen this import export block is now available. So nicely, you can export your settings from the device to an external file. Uh, keep that independently. If you ever needed to reset or something happened with your unit, it needed to be replaced, you wanted to migrate from one to another, you can export to a file and import from that file. With the main zone on here, we can see if I hit export, it goes ahead and pops that pops that file out. But if you go, uh, I'm on a Mac here, if you go over into the downloads folder and look, you'll see a CONF file named after the after the device name. And if I were to re-import that, I could do that there. So let's jump up to the top and look over a couple things. Um, I didn't notice anything on the information page. This this looks the same to me, same, same product info, network info, system status info. They did relocate some of the controls from the quick access settings. So now these are much more focused. These are much more focused on actually controlling the zone rather than settings within the zones. So we have current power state, current mute state, current volume inputs and so on, and the ability to tweak the levels very quickly for a momentary type of change. And the zone two is the same. There were additional controls on these pages that have now moved and they've moved over to the general pane. So general settings is the same, display is the same. Now there's these two extra blocks on the system setup general page, one for the main zone and one for zone two. And here's now where you set your power on volume, your maximum volume, your power on input, and then you designate this default streaming zone. I think this is nice because these aren't things that you would, you would want to set in quick access. They were kind of just convoluting the quick access page and they weren't really adding any any value there. They're static settings. You set them and forget them. And so they really kind of belong, belong down here. Speakers is, is pretty close to the same. Jump quick over channel mapping. This is identical in the current room view. We still have four profiles. We can still rename them. We still see the visualization of the speakers in the room. Now I did set this up for the current state of my theater. Per my prior videos, I pulled all of my Aria 906 is all of my surrounds, all of my heights are all out. I took the center channel out, that's been sold. I had left the towers in, so my Focal Electra BE towers, 1038 towers are still in there because I was still experimenting, still playing with stuff, and I wanted to put, I wanted to be able to do some things with this despite the, the stall and the installation of my actual home theater 
So that, that's the only speaker that's configured. And you in, in the Anthem settings, you really can't toggle off mains. That's the one speaker that you really you don't have an option to toggle. You, it, it really just expects that you're going to have mains. But one of the items in the speaker setup that I had pointed out that actually was a bit of a bug or was the fact that on an AVM70, it was letting me choose additional subwoofer counts that didn't make sense because this this processor is made for two subwoofers or up to two subwoofers. The AVM90 is made for up to four, so they fixed that. Now there's on an AVM70, you get the options that you would expect to see uh, for the subwoofers, none one and two. Distances and levels are the same, and I have, again, started to do a little bit of setup. I set the distances for my, for my mains, and I did some arc calibration, just experimenting with uh, the arc software and so on with just those two speakers and I'll, I'll I'll cover that a little bit in a second in a in a supplemental video or follow-up video taking a look or first look at the arc software and so on you can see it uh, from the arc setting it did change my levels um, it boosted both of those speakers by by 6 db and then nothing else down here um pretty similar uh, menus as before with regards to crossovers and subwoofers and so on um, input control is the same, pretty much the same as before. Um, I did name all of my inputs and I deleted the ones like I had commented in my first video. Remove all the stuff that you don't use, get it out of the way, and so on. Um, I think there might be a couple of minor, couple of minor tweaks to uh, some of the presentation of a couple of these options in here, but I think for the most part the input input controls are the same. I haven't really set anything in here. You can see Anthem uh, room correction is now enabled because I have uploaded a measurement that I took and I have done the renames and that's that's pretty much it. <clears throat> they did move the add input button. I believe that used to be up on the bar. Now it's down on the on the bottom right. Network is, is pretty close to the same as well. The only thing that's different in here, there is I think a, some, some minor changes in terms of how the Ethernet or Wi-Fi configuration is. Hiding options that are not applicable so you don't get the you don't see the IP options until you flip over here to the manual mode versus the DHCP mode the triggers and such um, are the same you can see they have mo they have adjusted themselves to the list of devices and so on that I have connected to the unit as I've renamed them I like that so nice and I have set my triggers up at least for the current state of my system I'm running one trigger to the main zone that's powering the parasound a31 and then two triggers to only to zone two for my subwoofer amplifiers and for my parasound a52s which right now are not connected to more speakers because the theater is really devoid of of the bulk of its speakers right right at the moment just have the towers sitting in there and then back to the to the final menu some really nice improvements i think and again showing showing that they're, they're making good changes, they're thinking critically about the way the, the software looks and presents, they're fixing bugs and so on. So one other thing to take a look at that's available in here is they have added this new uh, interface. So you can see, you go to the IP address, you go to the IP address of the unit on your network, slash forward slash mobile dot HTML, and you get this view. We're, we're on a desktop browser here, you really wouldn't use this, of course, you would use the regular web server page, but to get an idea of what this looks like, um, it, it's compressed nicely and it, it works very well. It presents very nicely on something like a phone um, or, or a tablet or a smaller tablet. But we have basically access to all of the same settings, right? Um, they're just organized in a different way, structured a little bit more for, again, presentation on a mobile type of device. We have general, we have speakers. Again, all the same options just presented in a different way input management network and then store load update and so on now I think this is incomplete maybe this is because it's a beta release but what I don't see in the mobile UI is how I get to my quick access there's you there's no main zone 2 controls in the list here there's no other options uh, that I can see down here so I think that's that's missing right now um, it needs to be deployed in a more complete update for the, the mobile version. Anthem does have an app available in the iOS App Store, and I believe there's an iPhone and iPad version. I think it's fairly old. Um, I haven't really taken a look at that yet. I will, but I don't know if it's, if it's kind of abandonware uh, for these new models, and the app doesn't work in this mobile UI. You would be able to favorite this or 
shortcut it you know to the home screen of your control devices or whatever and be able to manage the system that way i will say also that when i was configuring the abm 70 i was using my ipad not the macbook and unlike the experience i had with some other some other devices the the web accessing the web server in safari on the ipad was just great it worked perfect no problems no, no rendering issues and and no no problems whatsoever uh, whether you're on a desktop browser or a tablet browser this this works really well and now you have access to a more streamlined version for more of a smaller screen small tablet phone mobile device i like to see improvements to tech particularly as soon as i as i put it in my rack so i'm going to be doing a whole lot more with the Anthem as we go forward here. I got a whole lot to set up once we get all the speakers in, a whole bunch of configuration. Look for that, that quick look video uh, using Arc and, and tinkering with uh, its controls and capabilities for just those two towers and a whole lot more as, uh, as I work to getting my, my home theater re reinstalled. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Look down in the description below for some ways to support the channel. Bye.